Hey everyone, good morning and good evening. So, let me see what are we doing today. <coughs> Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen. Yes, sir. Perfect. So this is what we did here last time when we met. We talked about custom images. How do we create custom images? We talked about how do we deprovision a VM so that a custom image can be created. Then very important topic. We talked about VMSS. That's virtual machine scale set. Why do I say this very important? Because when you're using pipelines, there is a great chance that you will be deploying things on VMSS. Okay, so VMSS it has its own capabilities: automatic load balancing, automatic dividing your resources on different fault fault tolerance and update domain, fault domain and update domain. So you definitely, if someone is deploying things on cloud, they will make use of this capability of VMSS. If they are deploying things on a VM, okay, if they are deploying it on Kubernetes and other thing so definitely this will not be needed so <clears throat> this is a very important topic from devops perspective and from security perspective so make sure if you guys have not practiced practice this the next is disaster recovery so this was pending so till now we have done availability zone we know what is availability zone we know what is availability sets we know what is vm scale sets we have seen what is load balancer now We'll see there are two more topics remaining Azure storage redundancy Azure side recovery. These are the two topics which is remaining right now. So you can club all this together guys and you can have one service at a time also you can use it depending upon what type of architecture you're designing for your project. So based on your project requirement you can club all together. If you club all together you get better resiliency better redundancy and your resources will be highly available okay but again it comes with a cost so if you are clubbing everything definitely go and make sure you have the proper calculation done what exactly will be the cost okay keep that in mind so now now today we'll focus on azure site recovery what exactly this is azure site recovery is and we'll focus on azure storage redundancy these are the two important topics again from security perspective making sure your application is highly available and redundant so these are the topics which we'll try to cover today so what exactly is azure site recovery <clears throat> so you might have heard a jargon bcdr when you're working in any project this jargon you'll hear a lot bcdr is nothing but it's a business continuity and disaster recovery plan how your business will continue in case of any disaster if suppose one of your region like suppose you have hosted your application in east us if suppose the complete region itself is down you might have availed the availability set option so that it is divided into multiple racks you might have availed the availability zone option in which multiple zone your vms are divided into multiple zone agree but what if the complete region itself is down could be any possible reason could be flood could be earthquake could be any terrorist attack or any any xyz which which is unforeseen which you're not aware which you cannot predict also that this may happen in such cases <clears throat> in such case of disaster how will your application work if something is such something of large scale is happening so that is what bcdr is all about business continuity and disaster recovery strategy so what will what you can do by keeping your business application online during planned or unplanned outage so in such cases you will be using azure site recovery site recovery is nothing but what it will do it will orchestrate disaster recovery of your on-prem machines into some other region like suppose you have created your application in one region east us 
it will replicate everything using side recovery option let me show you with a diagram imagine this is east us this is your east us region okay and your application is in east us you have your application in east us app one now with site recovery what you will do you can have one more region you can have suppose your region is somewhere west europe if you don't have any restrictions of data getting moved to the europe then you can even select west europe or anywhere in us also you can select west us central us and all this also you can select guys i'm just giving you a very uh, high level that you can even replicate your application to some other country also that is what site recovery means all about okay but you have to consider the what are the central government the federal laws of data because if you're selecting west europe that means your data are getting transferred into west europe so you have to make sure the sla and everything you have to keep in mind okay and if you have any such restriction that your data cannot move outside your country then definitely don't select west europe or anything else select uh, nearby east us west us central us all this you can select okay same goes with india guys in india nowadays the laws are very stringent you cannot pass any data from from india to outside so if you're if any indian company and if you're selecting any other region apart from indian region then there is a problem keep that in mind <clears throat> so, okay so this is what the exact application will be replicated in this region so this is the synchronous replication will happen always and your data will be replicated in this region so that is what azure site recovery means now in case of failure in case of failure when this but the complete region is down this complete region is down your application will be still served from this region your clients will not even come to know that there was some failure at the data side at the at the data center side and everything will be served your request will be served from this region so including what what exact what all things azure site recovery supports replication that we have seen it failover like if you want to test it some sometime you shut this particular application down from east us then your application will start getting served from here that is failover testing you can do and recovery in case of this application from some xyz someone deleted something or some xyz has happened if you want you can recover things from here also these are the benefits of using azure site recovery so this is the best strategy for your business continuity and disaster recovery plan if you have anything as such if you are designing any architect and if you want to have bcdr strategy again repeating business continuity and disaster recovery then this is a strategy which you need to follow okay let's see how exactly we can do this okay anyone has any questions guys regarding bcdr no questions so let's create a vm and i'll show you how exactly that vm can be made highly available using bcdr devops mela energy hello yeah yeah so uh, so you were saying that uh, there is a synchronization in between the both of the application correct so if there is means uh, something has been changed in the uh, the first application so it will be also changed in the, in the second one correct so, so how we can recover it so whatever changes you did so during a particular time so it's not a synchronous uh, syncing which is happening it's a asynchronous syncing which will happen so whatever there's a change it will automatically gets replicated to the other, other region also so there's a auto replication which will happen 
so the replication will I'll show you once we have the disaster uh, recovery thing enabled you will see how exactly it happens it will show you how the synchronous replication everything you can track basically okay let me quickly create a VM and let me show you how do we enable this okay I'm not installing any uh, application on top of it for now I'll just create a VM and I'll show you how the replication happens let's, let's wait Okay, let's wait while the VM is getting created. Okay, let's create it successfully. So as if now my VM is there in the location East US and if you want to start the replication like if you want to start the Azure side recovery then you have to go into the option disaster recovery. Under operation there is an option called disaster recovery. okay now welcome to azure side recovery this is the place where you can enable disaster recovery guys so as if now no recovery between zones available we have not enabled anything as such it is suggesting it is giving you a suggestion you can recover to the west us we are in east us right now so if you see this we are in east us and it is asking you to replicate do a synchronous replication with west us if you don't want to select west us you want to select something else for example you can select like West India see how this replication is happening you can even do the replication with West India but as I suggested always go with within the same country don't change the country if you want to select something in Europe you can that even that is possible okay but the best option is select the same country East US then West US was a good option let's go and select West US this is how and this all points which you see these are all re regions guys where the data centers are there now I can select West US and I can start the replication it's not giving me an option wait I think this VM is not up yet go back to the disaster recovery option okay see I'm getting an option of review start replication there are advanced settings wherein you can select what all things you want to replicate if you want to be very specific no I just want my <coughs> this resource group this network and all this if you want to select by yourself then you can go and be more specific in this advanced settings or else if you want to replicate everything simply come and do a start replication now if you go and see what exactly is getting replicated this is the entire thing a vault will be created where your replication will take care replication policy 24 hours retention policy so it will be retained for 24 hours this is the vault where your replica replication will take care so initially what will happen a vault will be created inside the vault you will have all the replication done 
okay and this is premium ssd which will be using how the cache will be standard lrs i'll talk about this lrs and all later when we talk about storage redundancy this is how your complete replication will happen now if i start the replication guys it will not happen immediately it takes more than 15 20 minutes so this initialization will take around 15 20 minutes to replicate everything though my vm is completely empty the synchronization will also take another 60 to 120 minutes depending upon so initial synchronization will take time later when you start making changes it will happen gradually okay so now this is what what happening right now the replication has started now for now we will go with some other topics and we'll come back once this is ready okay anyone has any question what exactly happening this replication will automatically happen and you will have uh, you can view your details by coming to the same disaster recovery option any any questions guys anyone any question regarding re replication and everything i have one question vikas here yeah vikas <coughs> how the traffic will be uh, it will be directly from the one region to the other region in case of this uh, dr we have to use any load balancer for that Okay, that is again again different architecture. We are talking about a VM disaster recovery. Now, if you are talking about your load balancer and all that recovery, that replication, then at the VMSS level you have to do that. Now we are doing at the very base level, at the VM level. Now this will not serve any traffic for you. Firstly, okay. Now whenever there is a request, like suppose you are accessing your application directly from that VM, and the VM is down. So automatically even the endpoints will be replicated at point of time and it should serve your request. You will not even come to know that something has happened to your VM and the request will start getting served from. So as if now the replication which we selected we replicated entire thing. Okay. Now if you talk about from the load balancer perspective then changing the endpoints and all this that's an altogether different architect because. Okay. So these are the things which is getting created guys the vault is getting created there are many other things storage account is getting created and all this the replication is getting created in west west us zone if you can just filter out and come to west here this is all happening where your replication is happening okay so while we are waiting for the replication let's talk about some more topics in vm itself backup this is again a point of backup which which you can do okay so this is you can enable backup again a vault will be created and your vm will be completely backed up guys so how do we create in windows restore points okay so same thing goes over here so like suppose if i try start taking enable backup there are two types of backups which you can create standard and enhanced once a day backup so you can select at what point of time you want to take the backup you want to start the backup at 2 midnight you can select the timing and what are the options available what are the benefits you're getting one to five days operational tier vault tier zrs resiliently snapshot tier what exactly zrs that is nothing but zone redundant so we'll talk about zrs lrs all this when we talk about storage okay these are the feature but if you take enhanced one you can take multiple backups per day Again, costing is the factor guys, standard and enhanced costing is the important, very important factor which you can take. And this is the policy, based on this policy, your backup will be created. Now based on this policy, this is the backup. Daily 8 a.m. UTC and <coughs> retain instant recovery snapshot for 2 days. Retain backup taken every day at 8 a.m. for 30 days. Now if you want, if you don't like this policy, you want to change it, go and click on edit policy. And from here, you can create your own policy, own requirement, and based on that policy, you can create a backup of your complete VM. In case of failures, your VM is getting, uh, you're not able to spin up your VM, something is happening, you can fall back to the previous day backup which you have taken. 
now pre when i say previous day backup definitely you will lose all your current work in such cases all your current work will be lost you can but you can restore your vm to your previous day so this is also a backup option which you can enable in your vm in case of any failure you can customize this and once you enable again this will take guy uh, take time guys if i try to enable it now because there is already a replication going on i cannot do this hence i'm not doing it right now so but if you want you can try enabling it and it will start initially when you enable it it will create the restore point then and there whatever time you have enabling it like suppose if i enable it right now it will create a restore point for me then from tomorrow onwards it will start based on this frequency it will start taking backup daily backups okay similarly there's one more option called auto shutdown this is very important option in case you forgot uh, turning off your machine this is the option which you can enable and with this is the option you can even send a email to yourself that whether your system was shut down or not you can schedule a shutdown so this is this comes very handy suppose you are working in a project where your vm your resource requirement is only for particular time like from morning 8 till evening 8 that is your resource uh, requirement after that even your servers are shut that's totally fine for the business if you have such projects in such cases you can make use of this auto shutdown option okay so after 8 you want your vms to be shut you can shut down the vms and you can turn on whenever there is a requirement coming in okay so even this this is a great option let's wait while this disaster thing is still coming on it will take more 10 minutes guys so let's start the new topic i believe anyone has any questions till now guys whatever we have done till now anyone tried doing all the networking what we did all the availability set azure zone azure sites availability sites whatever we did anyone has any questions till now before i go and jump on and starting a new topic um actually i just have question regarding uh, what we doing right now i do understand the concept of the backup and uh, the replication Mm -hmm. But my question is that uh, we are doing all this thing from the Azure Devon portal, which is manually we're config, uh, configuring all this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can this be configured through any kind of tool such as a uh, IAC, rather than doing it manually? IAC, you're talking about infra as a tool, like yeah, Terraform, like Terraform, ARM. And, uh, yeah, if, yeah, or cloud, uh, cloud formation, or something. Like that. IAC very good question Ahmed okay this can be easily automated all this thing can be automated using all this CLI biceps ARM and all yeah this can be done using that also you can whenever you're creating a VMSS you can have properties you can enable properties such as you want to even enable disaster recovery and all this you can put in gradually how much information you can put in in the uh, templates that we have to go and look into but yeah definitely portal is very easy way straightforward which you can do and if you are very familiar with all the json templates and everything then yeah that can be also done through iac tools terraform i'm not sure whether azure has given all this api rights to terraform or not but yeah arm cli and biceps this is the new language through which you can this this can be easily achieved yeah i think for uh, yeah, i think for terraform you can use that you can also use as long as you know which service you want to to, to create or uh, yeah as long as you you know the service uh, whatever whatever the, the the platform if it's aws or is azure yeah you can do that with terraform no uh, my point is if azure has exposed the apis for terraform so this is up to azure yeah, what yeah. all services they're exposing because the terraform at the end is a third party tool okay yeah i think most of the services are there correct yeah so if azure has exposed then you can even use terraform to do all this yeah 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 okay thank you 
no problem guys okay so while this is going on we'll talk about the new topic that storage account and then we'll talk about what exactly is all this redundancy topic storage account let's go back to some ppts we have done this skill set so storage accounts is a solution provided by microsoft for storing storing your files any sort of unstructured structured files can be stored in a storage account guys so there are four basically four options what azure provides you right now that is blobs blobs are basically a container storage wherein you can store anything whatever we can think of whether it's a unstructured data whether it's a video file whether it's a music file whatever it is you can store under blob that's the very basic storage what you will be using mainly into storage account so again the blob the version 2 which has come in that can be also used as a data lake so what we call it as data lake guys that's nothing but it's your uh, blob v2 data lake they have added additional feature of hierarchy name spacing what do i mean by hierarchy name spacing you can create folders inside the folders you can have multiple sub folders and you can store your data that is what the v2 the new version which we'll talk about later and that is also known as data lake for your knowledge other also the storage also provides other things such as queuing message queue so again this is apart from all the queuing service what azure provide even if you have you can uh, avoid the latency there's no you can even there's no a high availability or anything else that all the message should be read and it should be delivered and all if you don't have all the all uh, all such cr criteria then you can make use of this message queue this works very well but if you have such criteria no, no no message should be dropped all the message should be received all the message should be delivered all this criteria if you have it first in first out and all this criteria you have it then definitely this is not the right queuing service for you the azure has other queuing service which you can make use of but yeah if you for development pur pur purpose and if you have not such importance queuing then you can definitely use message queue service of storage account last but not the least we got file share again it works like a file share server what we have nowadays like we create a storage and on top of it will create a file share server which is shared across multiple team members of yours if you want any such service then yeah it has a service called file share so what all things we said we got blob we got file share we got message queue and we we got a no sql store okay no sql is wherein you get a table like structure and using the table you can create you can use this as a database also not exactly a re replacement of database no i'm not talking about a replacement of database but if you want to like dump any uh like the if you have anything which you want to dump on storage account which is least important which will be less accessible less redundant and all this if you want then you can make use of storage account definitely not a replacement of a database guys so don't keep in mind that yeah it is a replacement of database i don't need to go and buy sql license and all no it is not a replacement of a database but yeah it can help you store your structured data also so all these are the features of storage account guys so a microsoft azure storage solution for object storage file storage message queue and a no sql store for meeting modern application requirements most of the time you will be using object storage wherein you will be using blob containers wherein you will be storing your non structural data most of the time file storage will be used for file share if you have if you want to create any file share path online on the cloud then file storage you will be using message queue and no sql store very rarely guys the reason you will be using very rarely because nowadays we talk about high availability resiliency there's nothing should get dropped everything should get served and things like that 
plus no latency and all so in such cases you will be there are specific tools for NoSQL there are DynamoDBs if you have anything as such DynamoDB for message queue there are other services in Azure there are other services in AWS which you will be using it definitely not message queue okay so these are the features which is provided by Azure storage account okay what are the features like even though you're using a storage account what are the benefits and features you get high availability and durability I'll talk about high availability and durability how exactly it provides it has multiple options of storing your data replicating replicating your data in other regions and all that is something we'll talk about scalability and managed so it gets auto scaled depending upon your requirement it is automatically scaled you will not scale you will not go and increase that okay increase my storage by more 10 GB no nothing as such will happen eventually when you start putting your data into storage account it will start increasing increasing in size that is what it is done automatically if you read through this Azure storage is a platform managed service depending upon the requirement it will automatically scale okay it is providing encryption so all your data at rest or while in transit is encrypted at rest when I say at rest what is at rest when your data is stored on the hard drive so basically all your data are stored on the hard drive guys that is on the data center side on the hard drive so at rest also it is encrypted while it is in transit when I say I'm, while it is in transit while you are uploading the data or while you are accessing the data that is the transit region while at the transit also the data is completely encrypted so it's a very rare chance that any hacker or any person trying to do a eavesdropping will be able to hack your data till the time if you have all the right requirement all the right access he cannot do anything the only way he can hack by accessing your keys you're accessing your passwords your certificates and all when he hacks your account then only can then only he can go into the storage account directly he cannot go in so by default all data written to the storage account is encrypted by storage encryption services to access the data storage account provide different authorization method so there are different authorization method such as storage key, shared access signature and Azure AD. These are the method which is required if you want to access your data. Very important, we can access data over HTTP and HTTPS. So over the internet, we can access your data. Now if, suppose if you're storing your data right from this screen and if I want to share my data with Sebastian, Ahmed and others, I can easily just share my link give them the required access and they will be able to fetch my data from US that easy it is the data is stored in Azure storage with the help of SDKs provided by Microsoft developers can easily integrate Azure storage with their code so Microsoft provides SDK files so this SDK is basically available for everything guys. for key vault for storage account for other services this all services can be easily integrated with their application SDK is nothing but it's a toolkit using this toolkit they can integrate the services inside their application and from their application directly they will be using storage account some of the services which you are using on cloud they are fetching data from storage account will not even come to know that smoothly it happens Azure storage account can be easily accessible through PowerShell through CLI through REST API through your Terraform ARM templates whatever you want easily you can manage and access Azure storage account this is what Azure storage account is all about and these are the four services which I was talking about blobs that is container container gets created inside that container you will be having blob object what is blob nothing but your document images video backup file database file log files big data what did I say the blob version 2 is nothing but its data lake it has a new feature added hierarchy name spacing hierarchy name spacing is nothing but you can create folders subfolders and you can keep your data in a very segregated manner 
and you can dump n number amount of data on blob law. When I say dump, you can literally dump 100, 200 GBs of data also. That is a feature of big data, correct? Using this, you can, now if you're going at the big data site, wherein you're talking about data factories and your ADF pipelines and all, then this is, this comes very handy. Okay. Yeah. So Blobs even supports that and that support is known as data lake. Files. So you can keep your files, directories, file server, your text file, your exe files, all these files can be placed inside file tables. So you can put entities. This is how you can put tables information no sql table information you can put it like this queue messaging queue this is how you can make use of queuing service also so container as i said dealing with container is dealing with storing unstructured data such as text or binary tables are ideal for storing structural non-relational data guys so relation to a sql and non-sql is two different things when I say SQL, that time we are talking about relation between the tables. When I say non-SQL, there is no relation between the tables. So, so this table is only storing non-SQL data. Okay. Nowadays, this is very booming. This non-SQL concept is very booming. All your latest databases, DynamoDB, Cosmos DBs, MariaDB, uh, all this PostgreSQL, these are all non-SQL databases, bases, guys. Keep that in mind. And what is what is your SQL databases? Anyone? What are the SQL databases we have? Guys, what are the SQL databases? Like SQL Server and Oracle database. Perfect. MS SQL, MySQL, Oracle DB, these are all SQL and legacy databases. So after this non-SQL database came in picture and became very successful, do you think the SQL databases will slowly and steadily fade out from the market? Anyone thinks that SQL databases will go fade out and it will be obsolete later in this from the market? So the answer is no. SQL and non-SQL has their own importance guys. SQL database is not going anywhere. We still have newer version of SQL servers coming in almost each month. MS, uh, MS SQL is also upgrading. MySQL is also upgrading and all these are also upgrading. So non-SQL and SQL both has its, its own importance. Okay. So it's not that your after this success of postgres sql cosmo db and dynamo db your sql will fade out the answer is no okay keep that in mind azure queues used to store messages and retrieve messages between application component that needs to be processed asynchronously again uh, asynchronously what is the difference between synchronously and asynchronously can anyone tell me Difference between synchronously and asynchronously. What do I mean by data is getting transferred synchronously and data is not getting transferred asynchronously? Anyone? Any 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 idea about this? Guys, sort of Sebastian, I have to start taking names now. In synchronous the message goes in a queue like first in, first out in the asynchronous it can be any message delivered. No, no, not from the queuing perspective. So first in, first out, that is a feature. And so synchronously is uh, not, I'm not talking from the queuing perspective. I'm just talking about how the data get transferred. Synchronously is basically a stream of data, which is sent synchronously. Now, if we are doing a replication, like suppose I want two VMs to be replicated at a time. So I want a synchronous data transfer. So in my one VM, if there's a change, so immediately within no time, with no time gap, the data should get transferred to the other VM also. So a stream of data is sent across the other VM. That is a synchronous transfer. 
asynchronous is a intermediate transfer now the data will be transferred after 2 hours after 3 hours or in a, in a batches like suppose you have a batch of 10 minutes 5 minutes there is a gap time gap in between the data is not immediately available on the other sources so that is asynchronously so azure queues process data asynchronously asynchronously means your application is sending some messages the data will be received by the other application after 15 minutes if you can allow your application can allow such time gap azure queue is the cheapest service available for you for queuing and if you don't allow if you cannot allow such time gap of even 15 forget about 15 minutes not even 15 seconds then azure queue is not the option for you there is a queuing service very specific service available with azure and other cloud provider which you can make use of it okay so that is the difference that is a difference which i am talking about that you many of you will say this azure queue is very cheap why, why we are not using it so this is the reason guys asynchronous data transfer okay i'll talk about this lrs and zrs later let's go and see if the disaster thing is ready ready failed to complete the operation great something failed Prerequisite check field. Oh, found no suitable VM sizes in the target location West US. This is what happens when you're using free tier. We see this error, guys. Found no suitable VM size. So, in my West US region, I don't have quota of launching this. VM size. Let's go and see the VM. We wasted our time. No, the replication has not happened. Hmm. Let's try. Let me go and see the quota. That's why I always use pay as you go. So this is my current users. This is how you can check your quota guys. Go into the subscription users and quota. And you can see how much in the free tier you can use it. Now which location I was selecting? region west us i think in west us also i have option you see west us we can launch vms with the west us also cpu yeah i can do what are the virtual machines We can have virtual machine skill set also. Which family? Which family I was launching? B1, correct? Which family it is? B1, I believe. B1S. So, uh, okay, this B1 is not available in West US. Okay, that was the whole reason why it failed. Let me see what else. Can I do it in Australia? Australia Central. A8. Where this family is available, just copy this and check it. And then we can replicate in that region directly. Let's not search into this thing. 
see standard BS family vCPU this is available in East US so we'll have to look for this BS family yeah it's there in Australia Central what about West US no it's not only in West US it was not there so even available in West India okay guys understood what was the issue why why then uh, why exactly this disa disaster recovery didn't that's what it was a failed so this is how you need to debug guys in such case of failure you have to go into the end and you need to see why exactly it has failed what was the reason this is how you need to debug then when I went into my free tier I came to know in my free tier in the west us region i don't have this size available because of which the disaster recovery was failed why this size is important because we are doing the exact replication correct so if you're doing the exact replication in that region also we should have the same size now forget about this let's go and select some other region central australia now i have no such requirement that i have to be in the same region there's no data as such so I can put everything in Central Australia also this is a very big replication we are doing that's totally fine advanced setting something failed what failed If you are choosing general purpose V2 storage account, now ensure the operation data runs up clear. Okay, that is all clear. So, how do we fix if you want to replicate in West US? We have to firstly change this subscription from free tier to pay as you go. Once you go into the pay as you go, you will have uh, this B2 family available in West US also and in such case if suppose even though after you change it to pay as you go there is no B2 family you can easily ask Microsoft please increase the quota limit and they will go and increase the quota limit now if you see over here I'm not getting any option to increase quota over here if I try to increase something I'm not I'm not get an option to do it because it will straight away say tell me that I have I'm into free tier see this it is giving me option error now if I just switch to my different account let me switch to a different account this is my different account where I use pay as you go over here I will not have any issues guys if I go in into this if I go to my quota I can easily request for quota increase if I have any such issues over here I can easily go and request for quota there's no such error I can inc increase so this is when you see this icon this means you have to contact the support for increase the quota you will not have direct rights to increase the quota and wherever you see the pen mark that means you can do it by yourself you can do it by yourself um, how many vcpus count you want to increase so this is you can do it by yourself wherever you see this mark so they have allowed how many vms to you 25000 vms is allowed to me i can spin up 25000 vms apart from this if you want to have more then request azure see now if you go in west us i'll have i think i should have the b2 families over here this is very important to understand that's why I'm spending time explaining you all this okay guys make sure you understand this well West US basic a group in West US the B2 family is not there even yeah it's there see this I can have 10 till 10 vCPU I can launch it in this so if, if I would have done a disaster recovery in this pay as you go the error will not pop up in my this use case okay so this is what pay as you go does it will not it will have very minimum restriction and whatever minimum restriction you will have it easily that can be fixed using 
a support ticket or requesting uh, Microsoft to increase it then and there. Okay, so the f I'm using this free tier for purpose so that whatever error I face, you guys will have the same error. That is the whole purpose why I'm using this free tier for now. Okay, anyone, any questions, guys? Let me go back and see. Did the replication started? Yeah, it's going on right now. It's creating in Australia Central. See this. It is creating in Australia Central. It will take time. It's creating the network uh, network watcher that will also create a vault in Australia Central now. Okay, so this will take time. Let's wait. Anyone has any questions till now? Anything? Whatever we did, or we can jump on and start understanding storage redundancy. No questions, guys. Okay, let's talk about storage account and let's go and create a new storage account so this is when you click on storage this is how we can create a storage account now let me create a storage account first let's give a name to a storage account devos mela sa you cannot use any hyphen this name should be very unique there you cannot use any hyphen and all performance there are two type of performance which you will come across in storage account the one is standard the second one is premium let me tell you 99.99 percent of your work will be done by standard premium is only used if you have any requirement of network file sharing anything as such then at that time you can make use of premium or if you want very low latency that you don't want even a millisecond of gap while accessing and processing your data that time you will be using premium so this is known as standard general purpose v2 this is version 2 version 1 if you go fall back to version 1 it was not allowing hierarchy namespacing so basically version 2 is more prompt for data lake if you want to create a data lake as such so this is what we will be using most of the time premium again comes with the charges recommended for scenario that requires very low latency okay again there's a huge gap if you go and see the calculator the costing there's a huge gap between standard and premium guys so premium is only used if you want very low latency and if you want to access your data very frequently and very <coughs> okay so we'll stick with general purpose v2 redundancy this is the very important part there are four types of redundancy which is supported by azure storage account now you need to understand all this okay before we jump on and we uh, we start talking about other other things data redundancy that's a storage data redundancy it's highly suggested to understand now first is local redundant storage okay so local redundant storage what exactly it will do it will replicate your storage account three times within a single data center i know you have not understood anything let's go to paint and understand this by a diagram now this is a zone this is your region this is your east us this is your region correct and suppose you have selected what lrs locally redundant storage in this region you have a zone 
correct we we talked about availability zones guys hopefully everyone remembers it what is availability zone this is my zone one just imagine this is my zone one now this locally rendered what it will do it will create copy of the storage account thrice within the same zone so this is how your lrs works what it did so lrs replicates your storage account three times within a single data center in the primary region lrs provides at least 9 .99 durability so 11 times it provides your object durability within a given year okay this is what lrs means guys so if you are creating a storage account and if you're storing data into your storage account and if you have selected lrs so this is what they provide they give three copies of so any given point of time they will create three copies of your data within the same data set okay and if this data center is down your data is gone as simple as that now the second one is the second option is <coughs> geo redundant forget about that zone redundant storage let's talk about zone redundant storage so zone redundant storage what will exactly it will do it replicates your storage account synchronously across other availability zones what it, what exactly it does now there are other availability zones correct let me just recreate this diagram this is pretty big remove it okay let me have a bigger half size this way this is my zone east us these are all interview questions guys if you're giving any cloud interview then this is definitely they will ask east us in this i have three zone let's make it small zone one zone two hopefully everyone remembers what is this three zone i'm creating no doubt at all or anyone has any doubt about this what i'm creating anyone guys any doubt this is zone one zone two and this is your third one zone three what are talking what we're talking about ZRS zone rendered. Okay, now in this, what will happen? You will have three copies getting created. Even this, you will have three copies. The only difference will be the three copies will be created into three zones one copy, two copy, three copy. This is how your ZRS works. So ZRS provides durability, if I'm not wrong, it's 99.9 12 lines in a given year. So ZRS, your data will be still accessible for read and write operation, even if any of the zone goes down. If suppose this zone one is down, you can read, write data, and all these zones are synchronously synced together again synchronous guys so if you have something if you're writing something over here it will get replicated over here it will get replicated over here also that is what synchronously means at the same time there's no latency at the same time if you have x 
if if you have written something over here it at the same time it will be replicated year and year also that is what your set rs means lrs zrs two things which you will have to take care anyone any questions till now hello yeah 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 this is the uh, storage account or the data that is been replicated if you are replicating a storage account even your data which is there inside the storage account will automatically replicate it so overall we are talking about now we are at the storage account level inside the storage account you will have your containers created you will have your file share created you will have your tables created you will have your queuing service and everything so if you are replicating a storage account your data within the storage account is also getting replicated very good question now answering to your question suppose this circle which i have created which is storage account and inside this these are your datas which is there so everything will be so your storage account is the big folder guys just imagine it's a folder within the folder you have all your files and everything kept so we are replicating the entire folder in a very layman term okay make sense any questions any doubt and yeah this zrs guys zrs feature will not be available for all the region the reason is very simple because all the region will not have three zones as if now all the region does not have three zones okay so what are the regions which has three zones so asia pacific and i think europe Middle East and North America. That's it. These are the only three, uh, four, five three countries which I'm talking about has the, the continent which I'm talking about has the three three zone. Because if you want to use ZRS, you have to have three zones, correct? So all the region does not have ZRS supported. So the country which I have selected right now, East US, it has this support. That is the reason you're getting everything. Now let's talk about geo redundant storage. Geo redundant storage. <coughs> now this comes in premium category. Now geo redundant storage. What exactly it is? It is a combination of LRS and ZRS. Okay. So copies of your data synchronously synchronously gets saved within a single physical location using lrs so like what 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 exactly lrs was doing it was storing the copy in the same region and then the copies unsynchronously in some other secondary region now let me explain this mm, let me create one more region Let's have it over here. Now, have it a zone over here. I'm just creating one zone. Let's name this as West US. Hmm. This is zone one. Make it small. Okay, zone one in West US. Now we are talking about GRS, geo redundant storage. So in GRS, what will happen? For for now, just forget about this zones, guys. There's nothing happening in this zone. Okay. So what what's happening with in geo redundant storage? It's a combination of LRS. So you will have three copies created in zone one so one copy two copy three copies this is getting created synchronously okay now asynchronously these copies will be even created in some other zone in some other region you will have three copies over here also but this is asynchronously keep that in mind 
this is asynchronously which is getting created z is this is what zrs means okay make sense what is a grs means so you will have this is what geo replication which is happening within this that is grs so you suppose this goes down for some reason your data will be available whatever was synced exact data will not be available again exact data because this is not synchronous replication which is happening to the other region it is a asynchronous replication okay it is a asynchronous replication and the durability is 99.69 for a given year in grs So, what is the advantage of this? Because we are not getting the same data. Not exactly same data. We are getting the same data, but the only is the duration is more. It's not happening at the same time. It's happening in batches. Okay. Now the advantage is if suppose this entire region is down, you still have other region which is, which is has some sort of. like 3 3 years old data not not that 3 months old data no 3 years old data such data you'll still have it so your write operation will have first in this region this is your primary region and every data will get replicated in all this within this zone post this your data will be written into your secondary region also and then it will get replicated in all this within the zone that is what grs is all about. again it's a costly affair guys not a free free because you are doing a inter region transfer now very interesting one is the last one let me remove all this scribbling so there is a choice of creating means how many regions we want to create just, just like we have created east west and west west uh, if we want to create three region so there is a choice or no no there's no such, such choice this is all done by microsoft you just have to go and select your uh, redundancy option over here and based on your redundancy option which you have selected microsoft will go and create start creating the replicas for you there's no such choice that you can select multiple now if you have this geo redundant or zone redundant is more than enough you have multiple zones where your data is getting replicated or if you have very critical data you want the data to be transferred in some other region altogether then geo redundant storage is more than enough because you're getting three copies created in your primary region and again asynchronously there are three copies which is getting created in your secondary region also that is as per me that should be more than enough if any of the region goes down you still have data you're not completely lost you still have your data available with you okay last but not the least gzrs geo zone redundant storage now geo zone redundant storage is a combination of zrs guys combination of zrs and grs so geo zone storage combine high availability provided by redundancy across availability zones now what do i mean by that what happens in geo zone storage so firstly you have two regions east us and west us for example you will have three copies created in what is zrs zone within the zone in three zone the data is copied so you have one copy created you are synchronously this is getting copied two copies created third copy created now with zrs you will have three more copies created in other region this way this is your gzrs this is your backup getting created this is how replication happens
Understood? Now this is GZRS for you. Wherein you will have your data getting copied synchronously in all these three region, in all these three zone, not region, and then your data is also getting written at some other region in some other zone, three times. It provides the same durability, like uh, GRS, ninety nine point nine nine sixty nine durability of object. Okay, these are the four types of storage redundancy which you can select in Microsoft. So this is when we were talking about availability Azure storage redundancy. This is what it is. Let's go. I think we have it something in PPT also. Yeah, local redundant storage synchronously replicates data to three disks within a data center in the primary region, offers a moderate level of availability at a lower cost. Zone redundant, synchronously replicate data among three availability zones in the primary region, provides a higher level of resiliency at a higher cost. GRS stores another three copies of data in paired Azure region. RAGRS, same GRS but allows data to be read from both Azure region. So you can read and write data from both the regions in case of GARS. You can be reading the data from here also, you can reading the data from here also. You will be writing the data to here, you will be writing your data till here also. Everything will be replicated together. This is very costly. And this is very, uh, I think, very specific region this option is given by Microsoft. Not everywhere it is available. okay any any so whatever you select whatever replicas is happening anticipate a data loss because it's happening on the fly and in between if something happens so there could be a data loss that's a warning which you have to keep in mind that's why they say they never say 100 percent durability the reason they calculate 99 percent 99 those durability keeping all this keeping all this in mind so this is how smart they play. They never say 100% durability. Never. There is a chance of here and there some loss. Okay. Any IT we never say in information technology. We never say 100% for anything. That's a different story. Okay guys. Any questions? This was a, length, a big session today. I wanted to complete this. Because tomorrow we'll start with practicals of storage account multiple ways how do we access okay mm, vm is did it got replicate let's go and see it yeah guys see this your disaster recovery is ready the status is zero percent synchronized by tomorrow if you see it will be hundred percent synchronized that means your complete VM got replicated into my other region that was Australia configuration issues no issues agent version the status is healthy once it is 100% synchronized you can do a failover testing also what do I mean by failover testing you will stop your VM in one region that's your East US wherever it is and your central uh, Australia will start serving the request you can even it also takes a recovery points so you can even disable your replication. These are all the options which you see at the top. This will be enabled once the synchronization is 100%. Okay. This is your disaster recovery in action right now. And if you see any error, opening pages and everything. So it has a, a bit of monitoring feature which wherein it will start prompting those errors to you. If there's any any event, any major event happened in the last 72 hours, it can print that also for you. Okay, failover readiness. It's healthy, it's ready. Once the synchronization is done, you can do a failover testing also.
this is usually we do in companies we do the failover testing we'll see my other side my disaster side is working on my dr side is working or not so we usually do it in three months of time and test everything at once okay that's it for me i'll be deleting everything for now so just go and test it by yourself make sure you are at the screen if you leave it for some time then this will be 100 percent it eventually it happens it will not immediately happen if you leave it for some time it will hap happen 100 percent after that you can if you want to test your failover thing you can go and test it and if you want to resync you can just click on this resync button and it will start resyncing the vms again okay that's it if you have, if you have any questions any doubt please do let me know or we can wind up the call for today anyone guys any doubt actually uh it's not a doubt i just want you to kind of uh appreciate on what you just uh we just did regarding the backup on redundancy i just want you to make some kind of connection with that with the uh snapshot the backup thing the vm backup you're talking about yeah yeah this is kind of a complete vm snapshot will be created this vm's backup which we're talking about if we enable the backup so basically it will now if i s enable the backup right now so if i just click on enable the backup what it will do it will create a snapshot right away it will create a vault and it will create a snapshot right away and post on the policies the policy the backup policy which we have defined if you have seen the policy uh, the backup each day it will take a backup at 8 a.m utc okay that is plus 5 30 if 8 a.m utc somewhere around india time two o'clock afternoon it will start taking the backups so it's a snapshot yeah, which i is, yeah i totally understand the that concept i'm just trying to get the larger picture if you're getting that snapshot isn't that as well be considered like a more kind of like a, uh uh resiliency in terms of uh having a backup for data or any kind of service it could be but that is not your current data correct it is why right. if i if i if i'm working with a project wherein a minute of data is also very important for me just imagine your backup is of previous day eight o'clock and all your current data is lost so it could be one of the option but no it is not 100 uh, percent you cannot rely on this backup thing as simple as that you can enable backup that is for sure uh, any given point of time if you fall back to the previous restore point you can definitely enable that is a good option but yeah if you want from the availability point of view if you're talking about from the availability point of view that i have a backup with me but the backup is of previous day will it make any sense okay in your very highly available web application you're working with the banking what about okay. all all the transaction in between gone correct so no this is not I'm the right option the yeah, yeah no problem no problem no problem anyone else guys very good question Ahmed. good anyone else yeah uh, uh, let's say uh, when we enable any any one of the redundancy option, uh, like is it uh, immediately available for the access? Let's say uh, LRS or JRS we enable. Mm -hmm. If if we want to uh, access that copy copy data, then is it possible? Like we have the original one, and by enabling it, it creates a copy. So do we need to reach out to Microsoft or is it? Yeah. So very good question, Pavan. And so yeah, no. The answer is no you will not have access to those copies of data you, and in such a case of disaster automatically your replica will make sure that you have the web you will not even come to know basically it's uh, all happening behind the scene okay so in case of disaster you will automatically get your data served from other region you'll not even come to know that the uh, your data is getting served from the backup data okay or in case you want you uh, want to access anything as such you have to reach out to microsoft that i want to access my copy data on your portal from cli or from which whichever sources you access uh, azure resources you will not have 
access to your copy data it will get replicated and there will be multiple copies created but you will not have that kind of luxury that to go into other region and select the data from there no 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 such luxury will be given let's say in the storage account if we have like 10 files like back and it it will perform no like microsoft yes, yes, yes. but Mic microsoft will take care of everything it will all, always replicate your data it will start creating copies for you it will it will do always for you that is by default this is done and you will have the data access and in such case if something is happening then yeah you can reach out to microsoft they can easily fetch data for you and they can give it to you so okay this is for a plan to keep it safe sir. so okay. we enable this hidden and correct now if you see this guys the backup was enabled now if you see backup pre check was passed last wake up initial backup pending so your backup will be performed and once the initial backup will is there you'll have a restore point over here you will have a restore point created over here this is your backup policy okay backup now if you want to do an immediate backup click on backup now and the backup will start performing this is how your backup works but again this is a restore point guys you will not have current data so yeah you cannot be resilient and you this is not the right option when we are talking about availability and resiliency okay yeah but this is definitely an option at least to keep your os secure keep your uh, application which is running on top of it secure even though you don't have data but at least other things are there which you can keep it secured make sense Okay guys it's been 10 8 now thank you very much let's meet tomorrow we are still meeting even though it's 26 january over here republic day we're still meeting there's no off so let me know uh, we'll will be same time we'll continue with storage account topic okay thank you very much bye bye yeah okay thank you